In this video, we'll talk about the different worlds one can visit during a psychedelic journey, such as those on mushrooms and ayahuasca. Shamanic cultures believe that there are different ways to reach a visionary state. These include meditation, fasting, sensory deprivation, such as prolonged time and darkness. For example, spending days in a cave with no light, shamanic drumming, ceremonial dancing to the point of exhaustion, and lastly, an altered state through the use of plant medicines, such as ayahuasca or mushrooms. In these states, one is able to travel to other worlds. In this video, I'll give a high-level overview of these worlds and how they connect to each other. So let's jump right in. The journey starts here, in what's called the middle world, or what anthropologist Michael Harner called ordinary reality. If one decides to undergo a psychedelic shamanic journey in the middle world, they may encounter spirits of the dead. These are people who may have died traumatic deaths that haven't passed on. These spirits are said to even be able to cause illness or worse, possession. So in general, I try to avoid traveling in the middle world during my psychedelic journeys. Now in the middle world, it is believed that there are different types of doors. The idea is to go into an altered visionary state and then go through one of these doors. These doors are supposed to link to the other worlds. One simple example of a door would be a tree. Now, there are many examples of doors to other worlds, but for simplicity, I won't cover that here, but maybe in a different video. As a side note, I've taken psychedelics before. Some psychedelics are so strong that I'm just blasted off to some place. It's almost like the plant medicine itself is the door. But I wanted to cover doors in general because one can travel to other worlds by reaching an altered state without psychedelics, per one of the first few slides. Plus, during the psychedelic journey, one can intentionally choose to access one of these doors to visit other worlds. Let's continue. Below and above the middle world, there are other worlds. There's the lower world and the upper world. And it may be easier to explain these and how they are accessed per traditional shamanic folklore through examples. Let's take a look at the lower world. For example, if I wanted to travel to the lower world, this is how I would do it. To get to the lower world, while already in or while I'm entering a visionary state, in my mind's eye, I would climb down the roots of a tree. While climbing down, I'd find myself underground going through a transition area, such as a tunnel. These transition areas are common when accessing the lower world. After passing the transition area, I could then emerge into the lower world. Now the lower world is earthy and is typically filled with trees, gardens, jungles, and mountains, and other wilderness type areas. In the lower world, I can meet my power animals and spirit guides. I can go on adventures and experience different types of healing. Now, let's take a look at the upper world. To get to the upper world, while already in or entering a visionary state, in my mind's eye, I could climb up the branches of a tree. In this case, the tree also serves 
as the doorway. I keep climbing until I hit a barrier. This is usually in the form of clouds. According to shamanic belief, these barriers are common when trying to access the upper world. So I'd pass through the barrier and then I'd find myself in the upper world. The upper world is different from the lower world because it's not so much trees and wilderness, but it's more light and ethereal with pastel colors and lots of open space. It's definitely a lot less earthy. It's more skies, space with stars, planets, the moon, and the sun. Or it could just be a place filled with a lot of clouds. There may not be any land and there may not be any buildings. That's not to say that there are never structures. There are said to be crystal cities in the upper world. And I believe that I visited some of these cities during some of my own ayahuasca journeys. In the upper worlds, one can also call upon their power animals and spirit guides for any type of help or guidance that's needed. One can explore and go on adventures and have various healing experiences in the upper world. Both the lower world and the upper world are said to contain an infinite number of levels that one can explore. And each level can have something special to show and teach us. Then there are what's called the interworlds. These are worlds lacking color with very little light and are more full of darkness. Michael Harner describes these as zones between the middle world and the lower world and zones between the middle world and the upper world. One doesn't usually travel there unless they're thinking about dark things like death. For example, thinking about someone who recently died. Michael Harner calls these dark, dingy, murky places a sort of limbo. When one finds themselves in one of these interworlds, they may encounter spirits that are stuck there, asking for help. To get out of these realms, one can ask their spirit guide or power animal for help to reach other more pleasant worlds. Michael Harner points out that the lower and upper worlds are generally pleasant and one usually only experiences aspects of punishment and torment in the middle world and darkness and colorlessness in the interworld. So that's one thing I keep in mind. It helps me gauge which world I'm accessing during the ayahuasca or mushroom experience. During an ayahuasca ceremony, the shaman is also supposed to be able to help the participants get through these worlds. And it's one of the reasons I'm so grateful to have a shaman around during these heavy psychedelic experiences. The Shipibo shamans of the Amazon in Peru have a different name for these worlds and have a slightly different cosmology. We'll see if I can cover that in a future video. For now, that's a quick overview of the different worlds one can visit on a mushroom or ayahuasca journey and the general way to access those worlds. All right, so that's the end of this video. In future videos, I'll cover in more detail psychedelic shamanic topics, such as the various doors to other realms. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or hitting that subscribe button. Or consider sticking around on the channel to listen to some music and enjoy some original art. Also, please consider checking out our online art store. Links to any reference material for this video should be found in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'm Ryzen. 
I'll see you later.